Muy buenas chicos, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos a una nueva entrevista. En este caso estoy con Kobe, el nuevo tirador de, de Misfits, que viene de DNA, el hijo pródigo, como, como os escribí en la web de Sportmaníacos. Así que es una entrevista muy interesante y espero que os guste. Hi Kobe, how is it going? Hello, I'm doing pretty fine, thank you. Okay, so to start with, uh, I would like you to, to recap your first and for the moment last split with, with NA uh, in TSM. So, what do you think went wrong inside the team during this this sprint split? Uh, I think a lot of things went wrong already from the beginning. I never felt like we meshed together really well as a team. And yeah, I mean, as I said, it showed pretty early on. We developed like the way we played the game was very one dimensional. I think we had flaws with like almost every aspect of the game. Mainly team fighting was the worst thing for me because I wasn't really able to do what I usually do and show my strengths as a player because our team fighting as a team was just horrible, right? So that's the biggest thing. Uh, um, personally, how how you will rate your, your individual performance in this split in, in TSM? I mean, I think I, I played fine. Like I, I don't think I necessarily underperformed. I know a lot of people are, are saying this, right? Because obviously I didn't look as great, but it's hard for me to judge like objectively because I feel like there's, I didn't play any particularly worse than I usually do. Mm -hmm. And coming off the, the year I had, it would make no sense for me to just become like a bad player. So, I mean, it's not my best split, but I feel like I did what I could with how the situation was. Mm -hmm. uh, also, There are a lot of conversation around the, the NA level and how this can affect the players that, that usually goes from, from Europe to, to that region. So do you think that your split in a uh, stop it a little bit of your impressive uh, improves during the, the years in, in EU? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think so. My... I mean, I was expecting to be there for longer than one split, right? And maybe I got unlucky that the level of play was... I mean, that's something people talk about a lot. The level of play in NA was extremely low, the split. So definitely, yeah, the level of play in general is just much lower, right? That's no no secret. And even worse so this split. So I feel like uh, just everything considered, like I didn't really improve as much as I did last year, for example. I think I grew a lot as a player last year, and for this spring split, I don't think I got any better. It's like very small things I I can take on and use. Um, but besides that, definitely didn't really do too much improvement for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you you saw both an A and a new playstyle uh, that had two different ways of playing League of Legends, so what do you think is the best and why? Because in Splice you had like that late game style uh, that you that were very iconical and in TSM you you had like that NA style that is like I mean meat and, and that kind of thing, so so tell me about this. I mean, I can, I can go into specifics, but I think it's easier to just talk general. In TSM, we were playing really well early game, but we were clueless after the early game. Mm -hmm. So that's why we we would almost get a gold lead in every single game, but we didn't know what to do after. Um, I mean, overall, it's like pretty obvious that the level of play is much higher in EU because people have more game knowledge, they're more skilled individually. In NA, there was... I mean, th there were games where I was... Legit surprised. I think our first game of the split was I got so far ahead, it was like a free win game, and then it turns out to a 70 minute game in this meta. Like, I've had one hour games before, but in this meta, it was really crazy, you know, because mm -hmm. with shorter game times and all of this. Um, and that really hit me like, how, how can both teams be so bad that like both teams just don't know what to do, right? And that's that's why I feel like you see a lot of these stalemates in a lot of the games where. Um, I mean, people don't really take risks in NA2. That's something I noticed in EU. You, people are, like players are much more willing to go out there, take fights, and mm -hmm. uh, play risky situations. Where in NA, it's like very textbook kind of. They're like, okay, we're group. They're grouping a lot, right? Not a lot of side lane being pushed, or 
giving up ways to go push site instead. They're just going like four or five man mid a lot of the time to uh, contest neutral objectives. Um, so that's like something both teams would do. Whereas in EU, if one team knows they are not going to win the fight, they know they can just cross map, trade for a tower or something. Um, so it, yeah, I guess the conclusion is just that I think the, uh, I mean, I said it already, the individual skill, the knowledge, everything is just better in EU, right? Mm -hmm. Higher level. Uh, also, I'm going to, to go back uh, at the end of, of 2019 when ULF is place and, and the LEC. So mm -hmm. I would like you to ask why you decide NA and specifically TSM for your for your decision for, for 2020. And when you left you, you, you were considered one of the base AD carries here in, in the LEC. So I believe that you, you could also stay here. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, it was not a question of EU NA. I was, I mean, I've played for four years now and I just, we had like a decent world's run, I guess. Uh, it was better than what people expected. And for me, I didn't have um, opportunities to go to a top EU team and or like at the very top, you know, I came from Splice and I felt like if I was supposed to, so the reason I, like I could have stayed with Mad Lions as well, right? If there was something I would have pursued, but I wanted something new, right? Cause I stayed in the same place for four years and I felt like if I would leave Splice, which is Mad Lions now, then it would have to be for something better, right? And we came off as like the third best team in EU uh, that year. So it was, if it was not better than that, then I didn't see a reason, right? So then I looked to NA and I felt like I could go to a team that would be the best team in the region, right? That was my idea with it and have like easy qualification to Worlds. And I guess now it's easy to say like I should have maybe factored the, the region difference. Like I didn't expect it to be this bad mm -hmm. just in terms of like I mean, living there and playing there, it was something I really disliked in general. Um, I started feeling homesick as well. All of these things, I guess, are kind of obvious at this point, but given, I, I just expected something else, right? I had high hopes for it. I thought it was going to be just much different than how it was. Um, so looking back at it, may, maybe I would have made a different choice. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I think... I wanted something new and it wasn't what I expected, right? So now I'm just happy I can go back to what I know now. Mm -hmm. uh, now moving into your, your new team, Misfits Gaming. Uh, why do you decide to take this, this option as your team for, for the summer split? And also, uh, when you left TSM, did you expect this, this offer from, from Misfits? Uh, I mean, I didn't leave TSM. I, yeah. There were some unfortunate circumstances, but mm -hmm. at first, like, it wasn't really my choice, I think, because how it works in NA is that you can just get traded to other teams, usually. And it was looking pretty dark, like I was hearing about, okay, what are opportunities and uh, maybe I would just go to another NA team, right? Which is something I really, really didn't want to, mm -hmm. because I basically sacrificed my whole life over there to get over there, like my family, my friends, everything, and if it's not only being the number one team winning would, <clears throat> excuse me, that would uh, like make it worth it, right? Mm. So there's no way I would stay there to play in a middle tier team or something. Then I would honestly rather just retire, honestly. Um, so when I heard about Misfits, I was really happy that I could, first of all, go back to EU because I wanted to go home, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, in Misfits, where I think it's a, uh, I mean, I followed them for a long time. I think they're a great orc. I heard only good stuff about them mostly. And I think their team looked really promising. Fabian was a player I was excited to play with. So when I heard that was an opportunity, I just yeah pushed really hard to to try to get myself into there, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and with Misfits this split, what are your, your main goals? I, I guess you want to go Worlds again and, and have a good run there. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, I don't have any, uh, it's like very obvious goals, right? I want to place top four, now there's four world spots, go to worlds. I want to do as well in the split as possible. Um, at the end of the day, if if we do get top four, I will still be sad that we didn't get number one, right? Because you keep going in playoffs until you lose, and when you lose, of course, it's it sucks. But 
then you have that second chance in trying to qualify for Worlds, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like always the two goals, doing as well in the split as you can and going and qualifying. Um, and yeah, I think I've only been playing with the team for a little while now, so it's hard to say, but I, I think it's fair to say I have high hopes for this team already. Uh, yeah, I I want now to, to make a little more insight about your teammates, so uh, did you practice already with them? And also I want to specifically know about Denik, your new your new support. Um, yeah, I mean, I. it's about a week ago I came here uh, to EU and had some jet lag and I've just been spamming solo queue, duo queue since then with all the teammates and I think it went pretty well with like all of them. Um, it's like synergy needs to be built, but it's it comes so much easier than with my previous team in TSM because with these these players, I just feel so I don't know how to describe it, but we just want the same thing, right? Like I'm getting along with these guys on the first days better than I was with the people in TSM after months, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a cultural difference, maybe it's like a lot of different things, right? Um. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm working pretty well with them already. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a few days ago, I, I talked with Mac, the head coach of Mad Lions in LEC, and he told mm -hmm. me that, that you were one of the best mechanically, but knows the most talkative person inside the team. But if you have one or two leaders with you, you could be definitely the best AD carries, not just in Europe, but in the world. Uh, I want to ask you if you agree with this statement and if you think in Misfits uh, you have these these leaders. Okay, well, thank you, Mac. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty precise, right? I at least in the game, I'm not like the the typical you know shot caller if you want to call it that. I'm not gonna be the loudest voice in the team always, um, or the one who talks the most, because. Both because of my personality and also because of how I see the role I play and what I do. Um, so yeah, I, I typically like to focus a lot on myself to make sure I do as best as I can. And I would say more so out of the game, I, I think I can have a bigger voice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just want to do as well as possible. And right now I'm just trying to fit into the team because like I don't... I don't come into a new place and just demand to, you know, do things my way. Mm -hmm. And that's easy to say because I stayed the same place for four years, right? So I had a lot of things given to me like that. But joining a new team, I like to kind of just spectate for a bit. Or, you know, I come in, I see, okay, where can I help? Where can I uh, fill in some gaps? Where What are we lacking? And I more try to have a louder voice outside of the game in reviews and just talking to the other players rather than inside the game, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so finally, uh, we have some new faces in LEC. Uh, plenty teams uh, use uh, the strategy of going for rookies uh, mm -hmm. instead of going for super teams like Misfits last year compared to Misfits this year, for example. And we have people such as Denny, Karthi, Kaiser or, or Razor. So, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you watch it, LEC this spring split, but if so, what do you think about the the actual level of the region compared to to last year? Um, I've been watching quite a bit, and I mean to start with like the Misfits players like Denig and Raysorg, I've only been positively surprised by get getting to know them and playing with them. I think they are very skilled at the game, and like especially Rastorg, this guy is like super young, talented, and with Denig as well, like I got surprised like how much he knows about the game already, considering like, he's not as young as him, but he doesn't have as much experience, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Or maybe at least at you know, LEC level. And for the Mad I mean this it's kind of a funny story because coming into this year, like I knew about this rookie versus super team kind of thing, and that was one of the reasons why I mean if you have followed my career closely and known how what kind of players I've played with. I was not really interested in staying the same place and trying to rebuild a new squad with a bunch of rookies around me because I felt like it was something, I mean, in Spice it was something we tried for like two years or, you know, we were rebuilding both years kind of, with like me and Xerxes as a core. And just starting from scratch, 
it, it's like a fun process, you know, but I wanted something else. And I didn't I didn't expect the level of play to be this high with the amount of rookies coming in different teams. So maybe I, I didn't value them highly enough or just underrated them myself. Uh, a funny story is also like from Mad Lions, um, like Karsi, for example, I, I think I met this guy last year somewhere in Berlin. He was friends with Humanoid and that just goes to show like, I didn't know who this guy was, you know, <laughs> like uh, I, I saw him in person and I was like, oh, so what do you do? Like he was friends with Humanoid. I'm like, do you play League as well or something? And then he was like so sad because <laughs> I mean, he was, he was playing in big, you know, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. EU Masters and stuff, and I'm just like, I didn't really follow the that scene that closely uh, because I was just so focused on doing as well as I could myself there. Um, so that after seeing him in this bit, like he, I never expected a player like this to just come in and be doing this well, right? So that's that's gonna be very exciting to play against. And yeah, I mean, I know him now for sure, but hopefully I'll still take him down when I <laughs> when I come back. So yeah, just a funny story. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so so the, here are the questions uh, by my side. Nothing more to say. Just uh, wish you luck for for this split and hope your your comeback to to you is uh, very 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 uh, satisfactory. So thanks uh, for your time also and, and goodbye. Okay, thank you. Bye. Goodbye.